don't know if you were listening just before, but we had a conversation with Steve Leisman about things he would like to hear from you, and that included um, what's going on with the Fed. Is there what what went wrong? Why weren't they able to raise rates sooner? What do we do about that? Well, I did hear what Steve said about institutional reform, and I'm not saying that's not helpful. In fact, maybe the terms could be staggered even further away from uh, the, the political calendar. But, Becky, it's not really about structural reform. It's about just reacting to the obvious situation, which was that a year and two months ago, uh, back when the $1.9 trillion stimulus package was put out, uh, people said from the right and the left and Democrats and Republicans, famously Larry Summers, but also a lot of us said, look, the economy is already performing uh, well coming out of the pandemic. All the indications are it will be back to pre-pandemic levels actually by, by mid-year. That was a CBO estimate I talked about on this show, uh, and that's the Congressional Budget Office. It was an internal estimate, but also the outside estimates were saying the same thing. This will overheat the economy if you put this kind of stimulus out. So I think it was pretty obvious what was going on, and at that point, it would have been more helpful should, had the Fed taken action. Having said that, uh, you know, it, it, it's easy to be uh, the armchair quarterback uh, exactly. in, in retrospect. So it's, you know, but, but I think that was the moment. And I don't think it was necessarily in 2020, but in 2021, early 2021, it was obvious we were seeing a big mismatch between demand and supply. And that's when they should have acted, in my view. You know, Senator Portman, we've made the point repeatedly that, that the Fed doesn't really have the tools to, to deal with a supply shortage. Their, their only thing they can do is, is, is smash down demand, and that, that's pretty painful. Um, it can lead to yeah, downturns, it, it recessions, is. anything else. And I think we're wondering right now how that landing is going to be. Um, what yeah. else could be done? Becky, what, the, the, what the, one, the one exception I, I would say to that is that now and again, the, the, the Fed, just by, uh, you know, hortatory language, can make a difference in terms of policy, including on the supply side. And if you listen carefully to what Jay Powell uh, said this week, I think he, again, he's turning back to Congress and saying, you know, this is not just about monetary policy. It's also about fiscal policy, energy policy. He didn't use those words explicitly, but it's about policy changes to improve on the supply side. And the situation we're in is caused by a lot of factors, the pandemic, uh, certainly what's happening in Ukraine today. But most of it, I would argue, is because of bad policy decisions. One, the administration way overstimulating with the $1.9 trillion package, the biggest spending bill in the history of the country, chock full of stimulus. Less than half of it had anything to do with, with uh, the pandemic. And then on the supply side, uh, the regulatory efforts that this administration has undertaken to add regulations, what they have done to the oil and gas business, which is to stifle production, we're a million barrels short of where we were pre-pandemic a day right now in America. So we are not reaching our capacity yet. Why? Because the administration gave every signal and specific policies like saying we're not going to produce more on federal lands or federal waters uh, that, you know, stop the investment in the production side. So I, I, I think the Fed does have a role there. And uh, I, I, I'd be happy to hear, you know, the, the Fed talk more about the responsibility that Congress has and the administration has on the policy side. That's interesting. Um, have you made those thoughts known to anyone at the Fed? Well, I, ju I just did. <laughs> no, I, I look, I, I think it's important that the Fed speak out uh, clearly in terms of monetary policy as uh, that's their, their job. But my, my point is they also have another role they, they can play, which is to say this is not all about monetary policy. We have limited tools and that the, the fiscal policy and, again, energy policy and, and the, the approach toward regulations, taxes, stimulus. There's talk now in Congress about another Build Back Better plan that would add more stimulus to the economy. Obviously, that's exactly the wrong way to go right now. President Biden sent a letter yesterday to the energy companies, a lot of different oil companies, saying that he would like to see them uh, get back into the position of bringing more refinery online quickly. Um, not so easily done maybe avoiding some of the bigger problems, policy problems that led to this situation. How effective is that? And what, what should Washington be doing? Well, I saw that the oil and gas companies uh, came back with a 10 point plan. And part of that 10 point plan is, hey, you know, loosen the restrictions on developing our energy resources on public lands uh, and in public waters, as an example. So what the companies are saying clearly is, you know, we need to have more certainty in terms of making the investment. And I think it's going to happen. It's going to happen more slowly uh, than anybody would, would like. That's just the way the market works. 
But it's no wonder when you have an administration that comes in, day one says we're going to end Keystone XL pipeline after billions of dollars of investments on the private side, and then says, and with regard to permitting, we're going to slow things down, including this uh, Waters of the United States uh, effort. And then with regard to public lands and public waters to say, you know, we're going to have a halt here in terms of, of new exploration and, and production. I mean, that's, that sends a very, very strong message. And it was deliberate. It was a sense that we're going to make this transition from fossil fuels uh, to the new, more renewable, uh, greener energy. And we're going to do it right now. But unfortunately, we're not ready to do it right now. And certainly not to do it at a time when, again, we had this increase in demand that everybody was predicting based on the increased stimulus. So, I think it was just a, it was a bad policy decision that's now uh, affecting middle class families in my state and around the country. Five dollar gasoline, uh, eight percent inflation on things like food and clothes. So it's, it's, it's really rough on people. It's, it's the most punitive tax of all. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.